Well, here we are again. It is uh, Thursday, uh, March 28th, 2024. And as I mentioned in the last couple of weeks, talking about the uh, New York sales, there's also a great series of auctions coming up in Hong Kong, particularly at Sotheby's. Christie's will be having something too, I suspect, but uh, this is Sotheby's uh, big spring sale. Um, it's, it's become very dominant in their um, uh, marketing and whatnot. And there's some absolutely great things coming up. And these are more of these sort of boutique sales, but many of them and they have uh, typically anywhere from 50 to maybe 150 lots on them instead of the the mega 400 lot sales so they're more focused they're more ref def more refined in certain areas of interest which i think is a pretty good idea so um and and they seem to work the, the buyers are certainly like them and they can do several sales in the course of a day and keeps it moving all right and the catalogs for these sales are uploading right now onto the uh, bid amount uh, reference section most of you know how to get there all of you know, probably know how to get there by now it's on the home page on the right side heading down uh, catalogs and books and they'll be uploaded to the patreon pages also the uh, the PDFs for download uh, for the patreon subscribers so everybody you know, have access to them they didn't publish a catalog for every auction they, they I think they did three of them are um, uh, downloadable to be made into catalogs the rest of them are not but they're obviously very visible and available online and uh, so forth at Sotheby's now we're gonna start with uh, this sale the first sale or one of the first sales is the important European collection of Chinese ceramics acquired from Edward Chow. And this is a, a sort of a personal thing, I think, uh, uh, for somebody at Sotheby's because uh, 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 Nicholas Chow, who's the head of the Asian Art Department, is the great-grandson of Edward Chow. And that is where, I've mentioned before, this is where he really got his interest in Chinese art back in the, in the 60s, 70s, and 80s, uh, up about well, 1980, up to about the time his grandfather passed. He was very close to him, and he learned a lot from him. And this collection was acquired from Edward Chow uh, back in the, uh, I guess, in the late 1960s, they figure. Uh, uh, many of the pieces in here were remembered by Edward, uh, 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 I mean, uh, sold by Edward Chow, were remembered by his grandson, Nicholas. And he wrote a very nice article in this uh, uh, catalog about his grandfather. And it's a very interesting story. So I, this is sort of an, I think this is going to be sort of an emotional sale for, uh, for Mr. Chow to see these things coming back. Um, there's an interesting story also about how he first encountered this collection again in 2010 when a number of the lots, including the, uh, the Guan vase here, um, uh, the Sung Dynasty vase over here, was uh, brought in for an appraisal. And he happened to notice it walking through the through one of the supply rooms that was on a shelf and for, to be appraised, and he recognized it immediately as it having been something his grandfather had, and uh, and that's when it came back onto their radar, and the family has decided to sell the collection, and it's an amazing collection, as you as you're going to see. There's about 50 lots here. They were all apparently bought at the same time um, um, by a European gentleman who's unnamed. But what a collection. What a nifty little collection. And I'm going to go through it. We're going to get to the, 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 the big vase, obviously. But I want to point out there's a lot of other nice things in this auction that were handled by Edward Chow um, that are uh, absolutely spectacular quality and do not have crazy estimates on them. And uh, if you if you want to own something from this collection, it may it may end up driving the uh, the prices a bit because of the provenance. But um, I think it's worth taking a shot anyway. And uh, one of the pieces in here that that I think is very uh, worthwhile, and it's not got a big estimate. It's fifty to seventy thousand Hong Kong on this very fine Yuan Dynasty uh, Celadon bowl. And it's a good sized bowl too. It, it's uh, almost ten inches in diameter. It's not a small you know five or six inch bowl. It's a pretty good sized bowl. And, uh, and, the, and that estimate works out to about, you know, six to $8,000. But what a spectacular example. Um, just beautifully potted with these, with these leaf decorations running up to the rim. Very well formed upper section. You know, the glaze, you know, creeped in nicely to, to contrast the bowl. Uh, the potting is excellent on it. And it looks to be, of course, in very, very fine condition. And that's just one of the pieces. All right. That's a great piece. And if you could buy it for, you know, for, I know it's a lot, you know, six or ten thousand dollars isn't peanut change, uh, pocket change, but uh, it's it's not the end of the world either. And then there's this, this really fine inscribed Blanc de Chine 17th century uh, uh, teapot, very rare type with uh, bamboo leaves on it, estimated at twenty to thirty thousand Hong Kong, which is, you know, roughly uh, uh, two and a half to uh, uh, four thousand dollars, basically. 
So it's it's again in that 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 you know reasonable range. It's 13 centimeters in, in width and is dated to the 17th century, probably uh, 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 either late Ming or transitional period. But wonderful quality, uh, creamy glaze, and 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 Edward Chow was a, a big fan of monochromes, and apparently so was this uh, European collector. And uh, here's the teapot, just a, a great little example and a very modest estimate. So it's, you know, it's, it's again, register for the auction, and take a shot at it, and you could end up with a gem from a great collection. And then over to this. Now, this is getting a little more serious. This is the Yongchen um, could, uh, conjoin, uh, uh, joined uh, quadruple vase with a seal mark on the bottom. But uh, a, a beautiful example that's worth looking at. A lot of copies of these are showing up on the market and have been showing up in the market over the last uh, 15 or 20 years. So you want to be very careful if you see one of these. They are extremely rare. They will not likely turn up anywhere in the United States and just popping up in some random auction. So if you see one, run for your life. All right, but this is a beautiful one, a beautiful glaze, bl slight bluish tinge to it, very, very nicely done, beautifully potted, and uh, estimated at uh, 1.2 to 1.5 million Hong Kong dollars, which is uh, which is roughly um, 130,000 to, uh, what's that come out to, about 180,000 uh, dollars. Very rare, very desirable, and the only provenance is acquired from Edward Chow in the 1960s. And that's all, what all the provenances read in this entire sale. It's pretty interesting. And then over to this, the really fine Daosai enameled uh, Yongchen uh, bowls with the, uh, the, the, the three, three uh, uh, mortal star gods on them. This is a very rare thing to come up with a pair of these. Incredibly rare. You, they just, you know, you, you, people today, you can be very skeptical when they see pairs of bowls of this rarity. But in this case, you don't have to worry about it too much. Uh, these are absolutely spectacular quality, uh, beautiful colors, beautifully rendered, beautifully outlined, and they're both perfect. And uh, they, they, things like this just do not turn up in pairs very often on the market. Uh, they are, of course, signed on the bottom with the Yongchen mark. And again, you can see how well and how profusely decorated they are. They're just great, great, great examples. And uh, the estimate, as I said, is, 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 is now getting up there on these pieces. This is estimated at four to six million Hong Kong dollars, um, which is roughly, uh, uh, what's that work out to, about... Uh, uh, four or five hundred thousand um, up to uh, uh, six hundred, uh, well, six hundred, six hundred, six hundred and fifty or so thousand dollars. So a little or in the half a million dollar range for the pair. Uh, these are extremely rare. I must remind everybody they are four inches in diameter, ten centimeters, and uh, they're you know highly specialized. But boy, are they beautiful. And then over to this, this is the, 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 the vase that uh, Nicholas Chow spotted in the storage room in 2010 that had been sold by his granddad. It must have been shocking and because uh, he didn't know where it went. He just knew that it was all, he knew that the lot of things had all been sold apparently to one gentleman, and that's all he knew. Um, Mr. Chow apparently, the, the grandfather, uh, uh, was kept his confidences. And uh, this is, this is the, the, the famous vase that's coming back. And uh, it is just an unbelievable example that is, a, as they say, an unctuous glaze. It's creamy, um, uh, uh, perfectly applied, beautifully potted, classical form, and uh, has everything going for it that you would want to see on one of these. Uh, it's just an absolutely great thing with amazing provenance. They provided some excellent photographs of the bottom of it, so you can see what one of these should look like. Um, uh, that, that very uh, 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 classic black foot, uh, from the clay, uh, a little bit, you notice hints of wear, which should be there. And if you, the, the, the reproductions of these often look so clean and fresh that you, 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 you can't believe that it's more than a few months old if you really think about it. This does have a little bit of wear. You'll look around, you'll see it, signs of it, but not damage, obviously. And uh, the estimate on this is significant. It's estimated at 8 to 12 million Hong Kong dollars or um, roughly 1 million to 1.4 million. Uh, now, this could go way over that. That's, that's the only thing I'm, I'm wondering about uh, in this because it's so rare. It's such a great example. Other examples like these have turned up in the past. And I think that my memory is, is that they've brought more. And this is one with an amazing provenance. So um, we'll see how it does. And, and and it'll be, it'll be I think Edward uh, Chow would be very happy to know that his, his grandson is now the head of the Sotheby's um, Asia department is and is reselling them. I think that's just a great, I think that's such a great thing, a, a, a great moment. 
and I hope Adele does well for him. All right, and then over to this, the next auction. This is the Dragon Emperor, Chinese art. This is on April 9th. Um, the uh, Chow Collection, I'm going to get the date. I didn't, yeah, they're both on April 9th. And then, then later in the day, um, they'll be ha having this, the Emperor, uh, 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 the Dragon Emperor, and this is the Year of the Dragon, so uh, everything in here is going to be ha have some sort of focus on on. on on uh, Chinese dragons and so forth. There's a lot of nice lots in here. Uh, and it goes from early, early jades right through the Qing dynasty. So it covers everything. And uh, some very important pieces in here as well. Stunningly important. One of them is this, is this really fine um, brush washer, Zhuan De period, Markin period, uh, estimated at six to eight million Hong Kong dollars. Um, there's a picture of the bottom of it. This is a really rare bird. All of you, that, any of you that have been collecting have seen, if you have any good books on Chinese art, there's always one of these that seems somewhere on the cover is, is such an extraordinary example. And this is, this is another one of them. Uh, perfectly potted, beautifully done, um, wonderfully rendered dragon on the bottom. Very fierce. There was always so much freedom. You know, the the, the, the Chinese painted dragons. There were there were lots of different ways they could be depicted that was considered acceptable. So you see such a, a very very wide range of dragons and dragon like creatures, which I, I I've always found interesting. And this is a very classic Ming dragon, uh, which is a considerable difference in how they were rendered during the Qing Dynasty. And uh, this is a, one of the one of the big lots in the auction, obviously. And uh, again, six to eight hundred, uh, six to eight million Hong Kong, so roughly eight hundred thousand to a million dollars for that. And then this, the Kotan um, uh, uh, jade seal uh, from the Qinlong period, uh, very very fine jade carving, uh, had been in the hands of, of the emperor himself. Uh, measures about two and a half or so by two and a half inches. They're, these are always, not always, but most of them are fairly small. But this is a, a nice one. It's perfectly done. And uh, they showed a very, very fine picture of the uh, of the seal underneath. And that's what it should look like. It's, uh, we often see people uh, uh, looking at seals, and the bodies of the seals are nicely carved. But when you flip them over and you see the bottom of it, it doesn't look anything like this. It looks a little bit sloppy, a little bit chipped out. Uh, because when they did reproductions, they really didn't pay a lot of attention much of the time to the quality of the seal itself, um, how the seal mark would be d d outlined. They paid a lot of attention to the upper part, but very little attention historically to what the seal should look like. And, and, and carving the seal properly is one of the hardest parts to, to get this so symmetrical and so perfect um, because it's going to be in the hands of the emperor and he's got to have it perfect. And, and Chen Lung in particular was a seal collector, and he collected seals from the, from the Song Dynasty, the, uh, from the Yuan Dynasty, the Ming Dynasty, um, and, and all their different materials, jades and bronzes, and then later, of course, in ivory and, uh, and uh, other stones. But uh, this, this is a really, really fine seal, estimated at 12 to 20 million Hong Kong dollars. Um, this may, I think this might be the most highly, highly uh, 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 estimated lot in the sale, I think. Um, it's, it's not in all the sales. There's a, there's a couple of paintings that are estimated much more than this. But, but this one is a, a rare, rare, rare bird. And again, uh, it's, it's somewhere in the um, a million, uh, what's that work out to about a million, 1.5 to uh, two and a half million dollars. Beautiful thing. And then there's this. This is the uh, other premium lot. This, yeah, this was also estimated a little bit higher. 35 to 55 million dollars is this incredibly fine moon flask with a dragon on it in a celadon glaze. And this thing is so perfectly done um, that you just have to come over and enlarge it and get and just see how well this. Now this is a Qing dragon and how perfectly it's done. Uh, ferocious, coiled around the flaming pearl, uh, beautifully formed garlic neck with these handles of little rue heads coming off of it. And it's just a perfect piece. It's just an absolutely perfect piece of celadon. Um, and uh, let's see here. Uh, do, 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 do. Uh, how tall is it? 21. It's about eight inches tall. It originally came from the Morse collection way, way back in the day. Um, Earl, um, Irene and Earl Morse. And it was sold in Hong Kong in 1981. And it was sold in Hong Kong again in 1999. And uh, it's been well exhibited. Uh, it's been published. It's a well-known vase. And it should do exceedingly well. It should do exceedingly well. It's a very, very rare thing. And again, it's estimated at about four to six million dollars U.S. All right, and then over to this. Um, one of the finest tea dust glaze vases I've seen in a long, 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 long time. This is an amazing example 
Uh, the color is absolutely perfect. Uh, and the tea dust glaze was invented by the by the color itself. It's an interesting story. It was invented by the uh, the head of the kiln director Tang Yin. Um, to please the emperor, and it is supposed to symbolize exactly what it's the title in first, tea dust. It's supposed to look like powdered tea, and it has these gold flecks in it that are caused by little yellow crystals. Uh, when the piece is fired, they use an, it's an iron oxide uh, base that they use for these, and when it fires, if it fires right, you get these contrasts of light green or yellowish green and dark green um, to, to, to give off the appearance of tea dust. And then this one has a very nice, not overly shiny, nice, soft, soft matte finish in the glaze. Perfectly potted right down to its tootsies, right down to the feet. And uh, it's just a great thing. And there's a, it comes with a Japanese box. Of, of course, it came from a Japanese collection. And there's the mark on the bottom. And there's the box. And uh, when was the last time it was sold, does it say? No, it just say it came from, it was in the Kansai family collection in Japan. Um, since uh, since uh, the early 20th century, and there's a whole bunch of information on here on this particular type of, um, of, of pottery porcelain. It's just a, a very very rare type, but it's uh, not only a rare type, but it's also a superb type. The color is just perfect, perfect. Estimated at six to eight hundred thousand dollars, six to eight hundred thousand Hong Kong dollars. Um, so you're you're sort of in that uh, 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 sixty to. Uh, uh, Eighty thousand dollar range, somewhere around there, sixty to eighty thousand dollars, ninety thousand. But it could go over it because it's it's a great. It is an absolutely amazing example. And then over to this. This is one of the big guns in the sale. This is the, maybe this is the biggest lot. It's an it's an imperial album by uh, the portrait by Giuseppe Castiglione of the Emperor Chinlung with his seals. And there's a, a very extensive write up on here about why this was so important. And, uh, and, 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 the, and it talks about the collector. The collector was, a, was formerly the president of France, and uh, he, he somehow acquired it maybe when he was in France. Um, I mean, in China as an ambassador during the late 1800s. Um, there's, there's not much explanation about how he acquired it, uh, but it is estimated at 50 to 70 million Hong Kong dollars, or six to, six to seven or eight million U.S. Uh, very, very rare, and in it are uh, uh, these uh, uh, plum bl uh, tree blossoms and so forth with the different selections of, of Chinlung seals above it. And this was one of his favorite things, apparently. He loved this, and they speculate in the article on here that it may have been kept on his desk. Uh, and and there's, a, there's a very interesting story in here about the artists and how he was so close to the court artists and he appreciated their work because, of course, he was a big benefactor of theirs, but he loved what they did and would meet with them often. And there's, there's a, a, a whole write-up in here about the camaraderie uh, between the emperor, um, almost informal um, relationship he had with his artists in, this, in, in, in discussing seals and so forth. And they give a very good sort of Venn diagram of, um, um, of all the work that's in here and then the long, long, long write-up. I urge you to read it. It's a very interesting look into the, uh, uh, the, the, what the goings-on in the Imperial Palace uh, at the time. It's a really charming article. And then this is in the sale also, an extremely rare, another Dragon Ball estimated at 8 to 12 million Hong Kong dollars. Um, again, a different type of rendering of the dragon. Here you see it being do done in this way. This is a Chen Hua bowl uh, from the Ming Dynasty. Beautifully done, beautiful soft colors. And of course, Chen Hua uh, 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 porcelains were known for their extraordinary refinement. And here you can see it with this snow white foot. Uh, that they did by by processing clay in small batches and really 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 cleaning it um, in Ching to Chen before it could be turned into a bowl because they didn't want any blemishes or flaws showing through on the feet if it could be avoided of course and uh, they were very successful here uh, this bowl is absolutely the foot is absolutely perfect and the uh, the decoration is is pretty much perfect all the way around this very very soft soft elegant blue um, against a, 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 a soft glaze just a, a very, very fine example. And uh, again, it's got a big estimate, um, basically a, a, a one to $1.5 million US. And uh, the history of it is uh, it was sold at Christie's last time, um, came out of a private collection, was sold in Christie's in Hong Kong in uh, 2004, about 20 years ago was the last time it was on the market. Ah, 
And then onto this, the, the Li, Shang, Li Shang Tang collection. Um, this is the Sai Amin uh, family's uh, art collection. I don't know if it's the entire collection, but it's part of it anyway. Um, they, they have a vast collection and some really, really great examples in here. There's only, uh, uh, I think, what is there, uh, about 60 lots. So it's probably not their entire collection, but it's certainly some highlights from it and worth looking at. And one of them is this. This caught my eye right away. I wish they'd shown more pictures of this. Because this is a really, really great uh, sacrificial red uh, Mei Ping from the Kung Shi period. And it's, it's a little dark. Um, I wish they'd shown more of this uh, because the, the color it just glows. The color is so good on this face. Um, it's very, very even. That beautiful white lip highlighting the top of it. And the form of the vase coming down the potting here is very, very well done. Beautiful proportions. And then, the, and then that neat finish right at the bottom where the glaze just cuts off. Uh, and apparently it is unmarked, but it looks like a, uh, a an absolute gem of um, of of this type of porcelain. Uh, it measures about nine inches, ten inches tall. Uh, it was sold by Edward Chow um, during his life, and then it was um, let's see, it, it was offered again in Hong Kong in 1980, and that was the last time it was sold. And it's been in this collection ever since. And again, another thing from Edward Chow, estimated at 200 to 300 thousand Hong Kong dollars. Or uh, what does that work out to? About uh, 25 to, uh, uh, well, 33, 20, uh, 25 to $30,000. But a really, really stellar example. And then this, this uh, very fine Chai Ching period dragon jar, dragon and phoenix jar actually is what it is. And it's not an enormous jar. It looks big in the picture. The way it, the, this style of jar, this one's really large. This one is just a, a little, uh, about 10 inches tall. Uh, but spectacular quality, and you just have to see the, how well this thing was painted. Um, the, the quality of the decoration, the quality of the enameling is so perfect, it's nearly photorealist. And I, I'm going to get over and show you, the, they showed one picture of the dragon to really illustrate how well this thing is painted. Um, there's the dragon head, and when you look at it, you look at every single line is perfect. All of the outlining is perfect, it's very crisp. It's very, very expressive. The, his eyes, his jaws open, his claws reaching. Uh, it's just a, a great, great example of, of a Jai Jing workmanship. And it points out in the story below this that uh, a very similar example of this jar was also done during the Qin Lung period, which gets us back to how many times we'll, we'll say, well, if it didn't ever, if you see a jar of this quality and it doesn't have a rain mark on it, and it's almost impossible if it's early Jai Jing, especially to differentiate it between Qinlong workmanship. So that's why very often you'll see 18th to 19th century uh, dates on some of these jars because the work is so good and they can't say definitively um, whether it was done during Qinlong's era or during his son's era. Uh, so it's, it's, it's sort of an interesting thing. This is estimated at 800,000 to 1.2 million Hong Kong dollars or uh, roughly uh, 100,000 to 150,000. It is marking period. It's absolutely beautiful. And the provenance is, is it's been on the, it's been sold by Sotheby's three times since 1975. It was, sold, it was sold in 75, 1990, and again in 2012. There's a fairly long uh, catalog note with it. Always read the catalog notes, by the way. They're very informative, and they're written by some very, very smart people um, who go into the history and, and, and maybe help color in, uh, fill in the blanks quite a bit for you uh, on these pieces. And then over to this, the jade. This is a really interesting piece of uh, 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 sort of greenish white jade with russet on it because it illustrates just how well um, the, the, the carvers of, of, of jade could take in the, the iron, inclu the, the inclusions in, this, in the stone need to be, can be used and they use them to create highlights. So in this case, where they did the relief work, you'll notice that the highlights are in iron red um, of all the bats. So all the bats were given color to stand out as they circle the jar. And the bats, of course, are good luck and, and um, um, uh, wishes for a, a successful life. So it's a very auspicious symbol to have on your, on your jade. And the jade seems to have some nice carving on the ground as well. But you can't see it very well in these pictures, unfortunately. Um, 
Maybe you can see it a little better here. But there was definitely some incised decoration on the ground. I wish I could see it more. Because the rest of the piece is beautiful, and it's very clever. And this, this has some provenance going back to the, um, Alan Hartman, who was uh, 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 you know, one of the early American jade collectors, one of the big ones, well, most prominent anyway, in New York City. He ran rare art for many years, but he and his wife, were, and Simone, were avid jade collectors. Uh, he started collecting jade when he was a kid in the 1950s, as a matter of fact. This came from his, out of his uh, inventory or collection at one point. And then over to this, this very nice Hongxi um, yellow uh, saucer. Um, I'm not sure how big this one is. It's a, it's a plate. It's eight inches. Sometimes they're a little smaller. But this is a very fine example. And as we remember from the uh, Goldman uh, sale uh, that just took finish at uh, uh, Christie's, these yellow plates did very well because they had about five or six of them. Well, here's another example with a Hongqi mark on it. Um, very, very beautifully glazed. Very fine example. It's got that highly refined uh, foot rim on the back. Very narrow, um, as we see. And the estimate um, is fairly reasonable. Again, twenty to two hundred to three hundred thousand Hong Kong dollars. Now, th th that works out to uh, what is that? About uh, thirty. Twenty-five to thirty thousand dollars they're estimating, and the ones that sold at Christie's all pretty much did in the fifty to seventy thousand dollar range. So we'll see if it continues, if the interest continues here in Hong Kong, because I'm sure the people that bought the plates in New York at Christie's were keenly aware that this was going to be coming up in Hong Kong in just a couple of weeks, and some of them may have been holding back, hoping to for maybe for a better deal, uh, because it, it, that's how the market works. <laughs> At any rate, we'll see. And then this, the iron red, uh, copper red uh, underglazed uh, 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 a dragon flask, Chinlung Markin period, and uh, it's the, the red on this is almost the color of puce. If it was over the, if it was overglazed, you'd probably call it puce. The color is very, very close. But this is all underglazed red. Wonderfully done. Nice shading. You notice the dragon in some areas are lighter, lighter, and then they get darker. And then there's this one has a light and a dark area. So, and I like those variations in color. I think it makes it very interesting. And it's, if, it, if it's done right, and the, wave, the waves at the bottom almost seem to be, you know, hinting at it, sort of exploding up into the bottom. Uh, it's an absolutely beautiful piece of porcelain. And the estimate on it is, is significant. Three to four million Hong Kong, um, or around... Uh, uh, what is that? I, I hate doing math on the fly. Uh, about uh, 350 to uh, 400 thousand dollars, roughly, somewhere around there. It may go over because these moon flasks, you may recall from the uh, last week at New York, all the moon flasks did very, very well, and generally went over their estimates to the to the upper ends or or well beyond. So that may happen here again. This is a rare example, and you always got to check what's the provenance. It was sold by Sotheby's 20, 23 years ago, and there's no history prior to that. Because that was, of course, back at the time when things were coming onto the market, when the, the Chinese had, 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 had come into the art market. This was sort of the beginning of that curve in a serious, serious way, and it sort of peaked at around 2010, 11, 12, 13, and it's, it's been fine since, but it wasn't going up by the, the prices, the valuations weren't jumping by the leaps and bounds that they did between 2001 and two and 2013. That was a little crazy, uh, what was going on. And I think, it's, I think the market's gotten more sensible, which is very healthy for the art market. Uh, so we'll see, but this was, this was last sold at the very beginning of that. So it'll be interesting to see how it does this time around. And then over to this, this is um, a, 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 from the same collection, the Lei Shantang collection, is this fantastic painting of, uh, from a scene from the, the Romance of the Western Chamber. And uh, let's see here, they, da, 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 uh, by uh, Ren Chi Hai. Um, <laughs> let's see, it was last sold at a Chinese painting sale in 2001. Uh, and, and, and this is, a, you know, this is a very famous story. I, I don't know if many of you know, you all, we've seen it, it's used often on porcelains, blue and white wares. You'll see things, a romance of the Western Chamber. And it's a love story, basically. And it ends up working out, unlike um, J Romeo and Juliet. But it was a young couple, um, a young boy was, a, was an intellectual, an artist. He fell in love with a, a girl that was visiting his town. And it's a, set in the Tang Dynasty, um, um, which was a, a great literary period of course, but it was written in the Yuan Dynasty as a remembrance by a Yuan Dynasty uh, writer. And there's uh, numerous scenes, there's 20 or 30 different scenes of the romance of the Western Chamber that you could see. But this is a very fine example of it. And uh, what happens is, is, is in the story is that the, the, the mother was uh, not in favor of him marrying her, her daughter, 
Um, and uh, the, the village where they, the town where they were was overrun by um, uh, or, uh, marauders. And uh, the, the, the young suitor um, contacted a local general to get rid of the marauders because the mother, the future mother-in-law said, well, I'll let you marry my daughter if you get rid of the marauders. So he got rid of the marauders. And then she went back on her word because she didn't like them. And uh, the, the story is it's a fascinating story. And then, and then he eventually um, uh, makes a deal with her that if he goes and passes the imperial exam, the, the, the big tests, the big exams, if he passes those, if he's smart enough to pass those, which was a, a very high uh, standard back in the day, um, he w she would allow him to marry her daughter. Well, he did it. He went back and passed the exam, and they got married, and uh, the rest is history. But it's one of those great love stories, and uh, it's often depicted, and this is a superb painting. My goodness, um, just the details of it, the facial expressions, the colors, and all the interesting little objects and bits in the background. Um, little scholars' books and little vases and watercolors and ink paintings, uh, citron Buddha fingers over here, a little bronze on a stand with flowers coming out of it, and this beautiful looking 18th century table. Um, just a great, great little painting. And it's, it's got a, it's got a, it's got a, an estimate, but I don't think it's a crazy estimate. It's estimated basically at ten to fifteen thousand dollars. Wonderful picture. Wonderful picture. And then over to this, there's, there's more. Then you have fine Chinese classical paintings. Um, and uh, we'll get into some of these. And this is, this is a, a sort of, you know, a, 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 an area where you can pick out the things that really suit your, your personal taste because there, there's so, such a range. And these are the, the, I'm just showing you the things that caught my eye that were particularly great. And this is a Ding Yunping painting of washing of the Buddha, washing of the elephant. And the washing of the elephant, you'll see sometimes discussed in, in uh, art, in, in Chinese art in particular, in Japanese art. And the idea is that the, the, the elephant, the, the white elephant was considered to be very auspicious. And, and, they, and uh, the, the, the scene of washing the elephant is washing away the, uh, uh, the illusions of, of, of man and because the, the workers here uh, under, the two, under the supervision of, of the monks are cleaning the elephant to reveal his white skin and to wash away the illusion, uh, so to speak. And there's, a, there's a lot written about it. It's an absolutely charming scene. And uh, as they clean him, he reveals himself. Um, and here he is. And it's it's and you'll see similar scenes of white elephants in particular because the 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 story comes from India so you'll see it sometimes on early Indian paintings and so forth and this one is a, a, an absolutely beautifully rendered picture and I love the scenes I love the way they did the pine needles they do them sort of almost like pinwheels above above the scene and this gnarly bark meticulously done and then and then the the two gentlemen one of them sort of resting resting his arm on the burl of the base of the old pine tree. Just a great picture. And it's estimated at 1.2 to 2.4 million dollars. So it's not for everybody. It's 150 to 200,000 200, dollars or, or 300,000. But a great, great painting um, painted during the, um, uh, probably during the, uh, well, it was painted at the end of the Ming Dynasty during the Wan Li period, probably. Great picture. And then this, this is something that is reasonably estimated. 10 to 20,000 Hong Kong or um, what's that work out to uh, fifteen hundred dollars or so? Is an imperial manual of birds. This is the black dove, and the inscriptions beside it. And the bird is just beautifully painted, uh, very very classical. And uh, it was it was uh, let's see here estimated ten to twenty thousand. Uh, came from a private European collection painted by uh, Zhang Tingxi. Uh, so it would have been, it would have been made probably for the Kangxi Emperor, judging by his dates or the Yongchen Emperor, possibly, two, two seal marks by the artist, but a great example and very, very viable um, if you're interested in collecting interesting historic things of top quality. This is, this is a, you know, at least the estimate gives you a chance at it anyway. It may, it may go for way over that, you don't know. But there are two paintings from this album in here, so you can check them both out. And then um, over to this, this is a, a little bit more money. This is a, a five, a 500,000 to a million Hong Kong dollar painting. But it's, it's by uh, Yun Zhang, a landscape. Um, and it's, it's, a, it's a rendering done in the style of the Song Masters. And this is a big painting. It's beautifully done. Beautiful landscapes, and it's important to look at these because you'll see you'll see that when when they when they paint on porcelain and other objects, you'll you'll see the same similar styles coming through sometimes. And in the late in the late Qing Dynasty, there was a, there was an era where there were a number of painters uh, pa painting these very similar scenes also, uh, which was always interesting to me. 
And uh, let's see, this is uh, 500 to 1,000, uh, 500 to, um, yeah, 1 million Hong Kong. And it was painted uh, again uh, during, the, uh, during the Qing dynasty, uh, Kangxi, the Yongchen period. And again, it was a look back because they were very uh, reverent and fond of it, uh, Sung work. And here it is on its, it's, it's beautifully, um, uh, the scroll mount is absolutely perfect for it. The colors are great. They don't, they don't push onto the picture at all. They let the picture really shine. Signed up here, um, has everything going for it. Great picture. And uh, these are the kind of things I like. You may not like these. I, don't, I may be wasting my time. <laughs> any rate, I love this too. This is uh, by Mi Fu. Um, and it's an anonymous Ming Dynasty uh, of painting after Mi Fu. And uh, it's, it's just beautifully done. Very ethereal. Uh, love the, the ink, the way it dabs on and implies shadow and depth uh, for the trees. And then the rocks in the foreground. This is a very, very interesting picture. And the estimate is perfectly, you know, 10 to 20,000 Hong Kong. So, you know, 1500 to $2,500, you get a very attractive painting. And these paintings are all fairly large. This one is uh, 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 11 by 16. It's not a little tiny one. It's a good-sized picture. And uh, you, it wouldn't be a, a tough thing to get shipped. And then the last things are just a couple of paintings from um, the, the Treasures of the Liu Hong Kun family collection. And uh, there's a couple of pictures that caught my eye, and this one I liked a lot. It's a very big painting. It it uh, it, it measures uh, 82, seven feet by uh, almost by a hair under four feet. So it's a good sized painting, estimated at 50 to 80 thousand Hong Kong dollars, which is you know six to eight thousand, six to nine thousand U.S. But I just love the way they did the the tree and the blossoms coming out of the rocks. This this very loose, very free style of painting extensively uh, uh, in inscribed at the top, obviously. Um, you'd have to get that broken down. They'll do it for you if you buy the painting. They'll tell you exactly what it sells. sells se seals on the lower right, two seals. And uh, what, let's see here, they're just, they're just uh, Qinlung, Yong Chen to Qinlong period, probably ch done in the Qinlong period because he was born in 1721. And he, would, he wouldn't have been grown up by the time of the end of the Yong Chen period. And, uh, but wonderful picture. And again, 50 to 80,000. And then ending with this, uh, the painting by Wen Zhen Meng, um, A Bird on a Rock. And uh, Wen Zhen Meng was one of the most important literati and scholarly artists of the, of the late Ming Dynasty. Um, um, colossally influential um, in his family and so forth. And this is a painting by him. It's signed um, very stylistically and uh, done in his, his style. And so for lots of negative space, beautiful script at the top, uh, five, set, four, five sets of seals at the bottom, and um, just a, a rare, rare, rare painting. And it's got a good estimate, 200 to 400,000 Hong Kong, or, uh, you know, it works out to about uh, uh, 25 to 40, 50,000 dollars. But what a great painting. And uh, they do claim it's by him. Um, Wen Zhenmeng, 1470 to 1559, um, uh, right, right toward the end of the Ming Dynasty, and he was the big influencer. And if you can look him up, you'll you'll see all about him. And those are those are the sales. And as I said, the catalogs will be up. Um, I hope you check them out. Uh, there's some there's some things in there in every price point, from what I could see. Every price point for most collectors, um, there's going to be something in there that you probably could uh, at least take a shot at. It may you may get blown away, but you you don't know until you try. And uh, I would urge you, uh, no matter where you are, if, if you find, find something in here worth looking at, um, uh, go after it. Because all of these sales, they've managed to put together a lot of sales here, with all with great provenance, great histories, and uh, in top quality material. I, can't, I, it's just, I was very impressed with this whole thing. So I hope, I hope they do well. Uh, and overall, this spring has, has produced some very, very good things onto the market. And so far, the prices seem to be good. So... Um, we'll see how it goes. All right. Subscribe if you haven't. Leave a comment. What if, what's your favorite thing? If you saw something else that you like better um, in the catalogs, let me know. Put it in the description, you know, in the comments below. And, uh, you know, let me know what you think. Always interested. And uh, have a good rest of your day. All right. We'll be back tomorrow with a regular weekly video. Bye-bye.